A bit of analysis now. We're going to talk to our environmental analyst, Roger Harab, in a moment, uh, in a moment about the science behind this storm. But first, let's talk to our weather, printer, uh, re weather presenter, Thomas Schaffernacker. Um, and, and in the last few minutes, we've been having these figures officially coming out, confirming how unprecedented this yeah. is. Uh, so they're saying 49, uh, over 49 inches of rain, so that's 125 centimetres. I mean... You know, that, that's an awful amount of rainfall. We don't often see that in, in, in tropical storms. And just to, to put it in context, London gets less than half of that in the space of a year. That's actually more rainfall than probably Manchester, which is quite a wet place overall across the UK, in the UK. That's about as, ma as much Manchester gets in the whole year. And we're, talk we're saying that this has fallen in the space of... Uh, two, three, four days, however long it's been, actually most of the downpours are more short-lived. So the, the, the most amount of rainfall that's fallen has actually fallen in even a shorter space of time. And if you think about all those waterways, they're very slow-moving waterways, and all of that water across the land, flat land, flowing into those waterways, it just can't cope. So it's a horrendous amount of rain. And then there was talk about the storm returning, of course, hasn't there? Well, the storms, the, the, the centre of the storm, so if you imagine these storms rotate, uh, that's one sort of from, from a few days ago when it actually made landfall. But the, the eye of the storm, or what's left of it, is back out at sea. And as long as the centre of the storm is out at sea, the storm can kind of sort of sustain itself. It's where the en uh, engine is. And whilst it's out at sea, it's drawing in more energy, more moisture, and dumping it inland because the winds are onshore. They're blowing from off the ocean inland. So that's the radar. You can see the motion. And because that storm is kind of stuck, it's stalled, it's not moving an awful lot, the rain falls in the same place over and over and over again. You can see where the yellows are. That's where the heavy rain. So clearly, most of that rain is slightly to the, uh, to the east of Houston. It's also affecting Louisiana, parts of uh, Alabama as well. So yes, the storm is kind of that the, the centre is going to probably drift back inland and that's actually a good thing in a way right. because once the centre of the storm, that engine is back inland, it'll start falling apart, other areas will get rain and then it'll And a brief one before yeah. we get to Roger, yeah. any indication as to when it moves back inland? Y yes, the next probably 24 to 48 hours will be crucial. It'll probably lose tropical storm status in about a day or so, uh, hopefully, and then those rain bands will be picked up by other weather systems and it'll drift further northwards. OK, I mean, uh, Roger... You know, I mean, this is astonishing. The same amount of rain that Manchester gets in a year has fallen in two or three days in, in Houston. And, and that is leading now environmental lawyers to question whether we should call these acts of God. Yes, acts of God, natural disasters. Because clearly hurricanes are natural disasters. Well, hurricanes have been in Texas history throughout time. And so has huge amounts of rainfall has so, and so has flooding. And there's n nobody can say that any of these hurricanes are caused by climate change. What scientists can say with a great deal of confidence is that warmer air carries more water. That's absolutely undisputed basic physics. And higher sea levels, the sea level is, is, uh, is increasing as, as the sea expands because of extra heat, will bring higher storm surges. Those things are absolutely certain. So these natural disasters are in part, or at least the effects of them, are in part man-made. Uh, how you would get to attributing that leads to the lawyers to the conclusion that they have, that before long we will be able to say, OK, this storm, that event is made X amount by man, and therefore somebody's responsible. And that has enormous implications for the insurance industry. It has implications for politics as well, especially with President Trump and, and, and his thoughts on climate change. It has massive, massive implications. I don't know when we would see it, though. There have been attempts in the past to bring lawsuits through, and they've consistently failed. Since then, over the past, I guess, 10 years or so, we've seen a new branch of knowledge emerge called attribution science. That's how much of this event can we attribute to human causes. It's based probabilistically, so, you know, something would be 50 times more likely to happen because of man-made climate change, or 100 times more likely to happen because of man-made climate change. And uh, the lawyers for one firm in, in the UK, Client Earth, and another one based in Washington, they think that in future, the science on that will be strong enough to be able to push through a lawsuit. And you bring in President Trump, of course, he's pulled the USA out of the International Forum on Climate Change. There is no mechanism by which to force him back in. But if, for instance, the USA were to be sued, perhaps even in its own courts, well, that would be interesting. 
Roger, thank you. Thomas, let's return to you, um, because this storm is having an impact beyond the um, emergency evacuations of people from their houses and the like. Um, uh, it's having an enormous impact on the landscape as well. Absolutely. And you see, it's, it's the fact that the landscape in Texas is flat. That's what the problem is here. Often when storms hit a landmass and you say hit a rugged terrain, storms often fall apart very quickly. I mean, of course, we get a lot of flash flooding and devastating floods locally where rains fall down, uh, where the rainfall down, down the valley and the rivers uh, um, obviously swell. But this is a slow moving area of, of, of bad weather over a completely flat terrain that's going to be completely saturated. That water is going to be stagnant there. It's not moving quickly. It's going to take ages for it to end empty itself back into the sea. So we can see some sort of before and after here yeah, in terms that. of, yeah, I mean, it's just an astonishing amount of water. And actually, you would have thought, I mean, if you look at that, I, I, I don't know quite how deep that water is there. It, it perhaps in, its, in and of itself is not that deep. And yet it's going to take time to dry, dry, drain away because yeah. the rest of the ground outside the city is so sodden. Yeah, and think of the climate there as well. It's a hot yeah. climate, it's humid, it's not going to feel great. You know. Yeah, and the other thing is just looking at those same images, you can't see a, a green thing inside. All you're looking at is concrete. This is a vast conurbation that has been concreted over for miles and miles and miles. There is nowhere for that surface water to go. And